Let's move on to stock up, stock down. Stock up offense. <clears throat> I'll tell you what. I'm going to go with a little bit of a silly stock up offense because of how angry I am about the situation. Stock up Bo Limmer because oh my god. We I love it. We seen what we need to see to a cuz cuz you want you wonder, right? It's like okay, you know, like six round pick playing really well, but is it like is it a uh is it partly due to the scheme and the fact that he's got Kevin Dotson next to him? No. Jonah Jackson, who was supposed to be a $16 million man, comes in with a Vila next to him, which is a big upgrade over what we've had at left guard. D Dotson, the healthiest he's been all season, the best game he played all season. In fact, I think it was his highest graded PFF grade for the season. And Jonah looks like crap. Mm -hmm. Far, far worse than Bo Limmer has looked all season long. And so stock up for Bo Limmer because I am more convinced, and you should all be more convinced than ever, that... Bo Limmer is the starting center of the LA Rams for this year and for the future. 100%. Feel that. I agree. Can't argue with that. Not today. You want to go? Um, you, want me, you want to go? Oh, I'll go ahead. Um, my stock up on offense, I hope I didn't take it well. My stock up was two players, Puka and Cooper Cup. Um, right. Puka had almost a, basically 100 yards, nine catches, 100 yards. Cooper Cup, I think, had like 80 yards or or top 70s. Um, I think. They both had great games, and I just want to keep, you know, um, saying that Puka is a star. He's not getting in the end zone yet, and we we need to get him in the end zone. But I think those guys are going to continue to get better, and week by week we're going to see hey, big games like we he, saw yesterday. It ain't his fault he's not getting in the end zone. If Matthew Stafford threw an accurate ball, he would yeah. have had touchdowns, multiple touchdowns by now. But I agree. Great game by offensive Troy Polamalu and Cooper Cup, cracker of the week, baby. Great game. Yeah. Cup had an amazing one handed catch. Oh my no no no. Yeah. That doesn't even do it justice. It was it was one of the sickest catches of his career. Yep. Just yep. literally stuck his arm out and it wasn't even like a bobble or nothing. It was no. the moment it touched his hand, secured, brought it in, got both feet down while he was being held and tackled. Bro, that play was beautiful. Actually, you say that like he's he's had a long good career with a lot of catches. Yes. You're right. That was probably <clears> the best catch. That might have been the best catch I've ever seen him make. Yeah. Well, I'm not going that far. But well, well, I mean, which what, I mean, it, it's it's up there. He, I mean, he has a long. I mean, it's up there, but he has a long litany had, of great catches. He's had bigger catches as far as like the impact in the moment, but just pure mechanically, like the the one hand. True, but that's, that's absolutely. Up there. I I, I, I would. It may, it may be prisoner of the moment, but I would hearken back to like some of uh, his toe tap catches where he's like. Okay, yeah, that's uh, a different kind of and. Uh, I'm not gonna lie. He had one toe tap uh, in the Super Bowl season. It was for a two point conversion. He had a nice toe tap catch. That was really that was. Uh, really honestly, bad. I'll go. I'm, hot hot take. Cooper Cup is top three in the NFL at toe tap sideline catches. Oh, that's not a hot take. I completely agree. I completely I agree. agree. And, and his feet is always there. He I'm, always gets. I'm feet. gonna give you. I'm gonna give you a, a throwback that was probably one of the best throws and catches we've seen Rams quarterbacks and catches and and receivers ever make in the history of the Rams, and that is. Throw back to my boy Jared Goff against the Minnesota Vikings. The throw in the corner of the end zone over two defenders. That was yeah. amazing. That I remember. That was exactly it. That was a that was a phenomenal throw and a phenomenal catch. That combination yeah. in that play was unreal. Yeah, I, I'm a, I'm going to stand by it. I think it's one of the best catches it I've is. ever seen. A hundred percent. Um. Anyway, so I, I'll, I'll go with mine. Well, guys, this one was tough for me. Uh, Cooper Cup and Puka Nakua obviously played very well, but I can't say stock up because I, you know. True. The stocks are going to be very high on them. You know, running backs aren't going to get it. Tight ends all suck. Colby Parkinson has effectively been benched. Yep. Davis Allen's mm -hmm. not good either. Matthew Stafford didn't play well. I just, sorry, this is a long-winded way of me saying that I have nobody. All right? No one deserves it. I'm not giving it to anybody. I'm not going to just. Sure. There's no uh, Can I give you a guy? Can I give you I'm one guy? Just give one. Sure. Who? Dodson? Uh, Avila. Because okay. he came back. From injury, a pretty a pretty significant injury, and he and was didn't give, didn't give up pressure. Didn't give up a pressure. I mean, he it was yeah. he was no. I mean, he was no question the best offensive lineman last night. Yeah, dominated. Yeah. And I, I I know we're already super high in Avila, and that's how you do your right, stack up, yeah, yeah. I expected him to be great. I just wanted to make sure he got a shout out. I wanted yeah, to make sure yeah. he got a shout out because to come back from injury, a significant injury, he barely practiced all week and then performed like that. Amazing. I, I I love the kid. He he's such a good player. Yeah. Yeah. I feel that. All right. Stop. I didn't want to, I didn't want to give it to anyone. No, no, it's either. fair. They didn't deserve it. You're right. I just want to make sure Avila got a shout out because I was yeah, wrestling yeah, between Avila 
and the stock up that I actually gave in Glimmer, and I wanted to make sure he. I was hoping when you hit it. Anyways, the, the the Bo Limmer one actually makes a lot of sense this week because you're actually right. Like in a way that like he didn't even play, but I'm sitting here and my stock is higher on him today than it than it was you know yesterday. So. By the way, by the way, yeah. this was a this like, was an easier in. matchup than than we've had a lot in the interior. This wasn't a they, they're not dominating yeah. the interior. They're no, they the, lost the, Christian the, Wilkins. They they, uh, they a lot of their D lines hurt. Like this wasn't some hard game. No, their pass rush is is not scary. Jonah Jackson got abused by a gar by a guy, a senior citizen on AARP, bro. Clayus yeah. Campbell's like forty thousand years old, and he abused Jonah Jackson all game. It, it was just mm-hmm. ridiculous. And, and what? Remember we watched? We were talking about it last night. But what it, Tom Brady says it all the time. I, mean, I think a few guys say it, it when when there's a, a tip pass, it, it the the blame immediately goes yeah. to the alignment. You can't be oh. you can't be allowing. Remember who was it that you said said that Joe, or was it Bulldozer? Uh, it was. Oh man, I had well, the name last night. It was. I forget, a, but it, but it was. A, it was a it Hall was of a Fame. Very good offensive lineman. Yeah, Hall of Fame offensive lineman. Yeah, and, and he it, said it, that it, the job is to when you're the offensive lineman, you can't when the tips keep happening, attack those arms, bring yeah. the arms down, stuff like that. Yeah, oh, okay, yeah, that makes yeah, sense. Well, but but was, and McVeigh was uh, low key, kind of like said something about Stafford and you know maneuvering the passing. One hundred percent. Right. Oh, oh, oh yeah. that's true too. That, that's true yeah. too. No, no, no. It, it's too. one of those things that's dual, right? When it happens, it's on the alignment. When it happens consistently, it's on your quarterback, and he's just yeah. mm-hmm. he's just throwing right at people, which Stafford did all game last game. Um, yeah. All right, stock up defense. Um, but Joe, why don't you lead us off on stock up defense? Hey, listen, my stock is already super high for this guy. I, like I said, I put my life savings on it. If I had a house, I'll put my house on it. But now I'm gonna put my mama house on it. I'm gonna put my grandma house on it. I'm gonna put my auntie house on it. I'm gonna put my great great aunt house on it. My stock up is Jared Verse, yeah. and I'm gonna put everything I, I could possibly put on on that stock because it's going to the moon. It's gonna be like the GameStop stock, stock that that was three four years ago. This stock is going to the moon, man. Jared Verse is my stock up. He's a superstar. I, I yeah. just and, go, ahead, go ahead. No, I'm not even gonna. I was gonna say like, I'm not even gonna get on you for doing the same one, like. Because it yeah. actually makes sense that it's like it's just he deserves even higher, it. man. Like, this is it. Like this yeah. is we we I like we say he's a star, he's a superstar. Now I'm like, bro, he's a top five edge edge rusher, edge defender in the league. He's gonna be elite. Well, those he, names, here's... Michael Parsons, Bosa, put him in that class, man. He's, he's well. By the yeah. way, by the way, he's top. He's third among edge rushers and pressures in the entire NFL right now. Yeah, that bro, he's. But but here's where I'll say on the stock up for Jared Verse is that. He went from promising rookie to looking like a stud, but he can't finish to, okay, he's a superstar. And he's kind of reached an apex here for me where I went, man, I was so sad when we lost an otherworldly all pro defensive player. And now I'm sitting here at week, what week 10, week 11 saying we have an otherworldly all pro defensive player again. Yeah. So it, it's a new, you know it's what? an apex, you know a new height. How close do you think? Will it be? Do you think he gets an All Pro this season? It's possible. He's, he's, it's possible. And, sure. and not yeah. to be, not to be, uh, not to put bad juju out there, but if, if one of the big guys gets hurt or starts to stumble, it, it, bro, it's it's yeah. in reach. Like, who is like Parson, other... Parson's already been hurt, so he's kind of already knocked out Parson, of the race. Yeah. Yeah. So it's going to be like TJ Watt. Um, TJ Watt. Those and, not having like that. Garrett, guy. Garrett by name Parson. basis. Uh, yeah, he's yeah. he's up there. We have only TJ and Garrett. To me right now it's tj and gary but i think there's four edge rushers for the all pro right because it's 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 two for each side it's like all pro one all pro two. Oh, yeah, i forgot about that team. yeah and so he might he might the nfc one well, he might you know, look he H- might hutch is hurt he... hutch is hurt parsons is hurt yeah he might yeah. sneak into the he second nfc spot hurt. like let's think yeah. of nfc yeah. edge rushers in fact you just you just named two they're both on the afc side yeah right because parsons like you said he hasn't had uh, NFC. The, the two problems, like, so I'll, I'll, sh- I'll show you. This is the way I do it. This is the way I do it for my brain. Is I have problems remembering, so I actually just pull up a list of the teams. So let's take a look because I think this is an important discussion. Like looking at this, Eagles, no. Commanders, no. Cowboys, no. Giants, neither. Giant edge rushers have been Brian Burns and Kayvon Thibodeau. Neither have been very good. They've been getting uh, badly outplayed by um, by Dexter Lawrence. Uh, Hutch is injured. The Vikings guys have been fine, but not all pro level. Uh, Packers, no all pros there. Sweat has been okay, but not all pro. I mean, I'm going down the list. 
Bosa yeah. maybe. No, Bosa hasn't had that good of a got, season. All you got right, is Bosa. No, but Bosa hasn't been that good. No, he is a he top has not been good at all. Jerry Verse might get that all pro, man. He he might get baby. It. Yeah, rookie all pro. pro. Yeah. I don't think even Aaron Donald won all pro his rookie season, did he? No, he I think did. he did. I think he did get all pro his rookie it's, season. It's no, he, he got he got Pro Bowl his rookie season. He didn't get all pro. I'll look it up. No, he didn't get I all pro. Hmm. If I'm being if I'm correct, I think he didn't get all pro because I know he got. He says, How long? No, he got defensive rookie of the year in Pro Bowl. Wow. Yep. Well, he got snubbed then. Well, th- there were some. It was bad. The, the, uh, they weren't better than Aaron Donald. Well, he it was a rookie, rookie season. He, that, that that year, you're talking about guys like Geno Smith yeah. and and some really. Talented you had Fletcher Cox. In his yeah, Fletcher and... Cox. I mean, he, look, he yeah. won it like seven or eight years in a row. So, he, <laughs> yeah, oh, he got plenty yeah, of trophies. Yeah, he, his trophy, his trophy <laughs> room is. He don't have a trophy yeah. shelf. He don't have a trophy bookshelf. He got a whole freaking room devoted to his trophies. Mm-hmm. All right, so stock up. You said Jared Verse. Uh, Will, where are you at? Um, um, I had Kobe Turner, man. Kobe Turner played very, very, very well in this best game. game of the season, in my opinion. Yeah, and I'm, yeah even, I'm not even going to say much more. Like if you if you watch the game, you know Kobe Turner balled out. That's 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 what I got. Yep. He played. Uh, well. I'm gonna I'm gonna make it real simple. I'm gonna go Omar Spates because he had the most snaps of his career, and he's like he's like really that. showing himself out to be. Look, he's still making some rookie mistakes here or there. But he's he showed flashes of brilliance in in coverage, even though he's still making some mistakes in coverage, and he's just he's just showing himself to be his instincts, his decisiveness, and his burst in the run game, bro. Uh, watching Michael Hoyt and Christian Roseboom get washed off by washed out by by Tyreek Hill and Johnu Smith and and wide receivers and and tight ends, and watching Omar Spates duck under the block of an of an actual starting offensive lineman and nail a running back in a gap. It's literally a work of art, bro. It's a work of art. And um I'm I'm getting higher and higher on this kid. I went from promising undrafted guy to like I think he could be a starting inside linebacker for the future. I'm yeah. being maybe not the maybe you don't want him to be like inside linebacker number one, but inside linebacker number two, bro, give it to me. Yeah, especially if we're gonna keep that strategy of like not really investing a lot in the position. Yeah, I definitely think he could be the starter for us. Yep. Right. Like in the long term. Yeah, sure. Definitely. All right. Let's move on to stock down. Stock down offense. I'm going to do repeat one of the stock downs that I had in the past. And that is Sean McVay, Hall of Fame coach, Matthew Stafford, Hall of Fame quarterback, Kyron Williams, all pro running back. In games when you need them, in moments when you need them, in in situations where you need some consistency, somebody to keep you steady, all three have been faltering on the opposite side of the ball. They've been yep. bad play calls, terrible throws, terrible decisions, fumbles, terrible runs. Like, how many times have we had Kyron Williams get a screen pass on an important down on an important drive, and he just needs to make one guy miss, and he gets instantly tackled? Like, That should just be taken out of the playbook, man. Like, I don't know how many of those actually work. I'll tell you how time. many. You can count them on zero hands. That's how many. Yeah, exactly. I mean, it's just it, – it's It's – it, the, those are the guys that we're talking about. Like you expect your big time players to make big time plays, big time decisions, big time execution, and we get nothing from them time in and time out. Yeah. And and running back is such a rhythm position. You you have to let these guys get in a rhythm. You can't just give Blake Corum three carries in the middle of the game, yep. you know, once in a while, and then be like, oh well, you know, he didn't look that good. Eh, like I'll take him back out. It's like, well, dude, he again. You have to let him get a rhythm. Like. Just keep, I don't know. I'd like to see them just keep him in and and let him get that rhythm like they did against the Packers, where he looked good, like they did against the Cardinals, where they actually let him have a few in a row and he looked good, and they're just not letting him have that opportunity, and it's really frustrating to me. That, that makes the Kyron stuff even more perplexing. Is that he is getting consistent? He's getting consistent carries, yeah. and there's no consistency with his game. Yep. At all. At all. Um. I'm I'm gonna go quick. My stock down. Ethan already said it. It's Kyron. Um, I've done him a couple times, and the only reason why I want to do it this last time is I want I'm gonna take everything out of the stock. Um, I'm gonna leave the stock alone for now. Maybe if I see it bubbling up a little bit, if I see some right trends, I might jump back in. But right now, I'm I'm all the way out with Kyron. Yeah, I'm out out on Kyron. He deserves to get benched. Yeah, I'm, mine is very straightforward, and we've already talked about it a lot. Jonah Jackson, I don't know what else needs to be said. Uh, he's not a natural center. 
He's having trouble, you know, snapping the ball. I would like to probably just see Bo Limmer back in. Yep. And um, and, that's pretty and, much and it. Having him be traded in the offseason. We talked about it earlier, but he just needs to get traded in the offseason. Yeah, it was just a mistake. You the signing pay, was a mistake. You can't that's pay a guy $16 million to come off the bench. It's that simple. Yeah, yeah. And, and honorable mention, um, because I already thought he wasn't really a backup, but now I think he deserves to be a McDonald's drive through employee, is Joe Nope. Nope. Boom. Nope. Yeah. You knew I was going already. Nope. Boom doesn't yeah, deserve he just He just doesn't deserve to be an NFL player. And I, who, I'm not who, even trying to be mean. It's just... Even in a backup capacity, in a, even in like coming in for a series or two, he just gets he gets toasted every time. No, you're right to mention him in the stock down, uh, even like as an honorable mention, because exactly what you said is like, no, none of us thought he was like good. But yeah, I, I said this in the Discord. I think I said it to you. Is like I, I thought he was okay though. <laughs> like I thought he was like a like a good backup. Like if that guy has to come in and play backup. for you for a game, that like okay, that's like that's a good backup. But like he was horrible, horrible. So yeah, stock down for Joe. All right, stock down defense, Joe. Uh, my stock down on defense. You know, I don't want to count it because I've used them before. Because right, it, it's Kobe Durant, and one of the reason why it's Kobe Durant is because he's been getting cooked in a lot of big plays. We talked about that Jaden Waddle Waddle play last week. Um, Jack Smith and Jigba beat him a lot in the end zone. He beat him on a uh, one fourth down throw. Um, towards the sideline, and I like Kobe. Like like we always talk about, he's very good in the slot, and I think he I think he could be on this team in the future. But I'm a I'm gonna take some money out of him. I'm gonna go stock down Kobe Durant. Yeah, I think they just have to use him better, man. I, I like I, mm-hmm. and I'm not I'm not even disagreeing with him as a stock down. I think that's totally valid. But I think two things are true. Where it's like that's true, but then also the coaching staff. I'm not. It kind of reminds me of like Taylor Rapp, where it's like, yeah, I don't think he's actually very good. But you're also putting him in not a good position. And it's compounding the problem. Totally. So, yeah. um, I, I'll, I'll go. I this one. This this was a tough week for me. Um, the defense played well for the most part, so that makes it a little bit tougher. And then I think there's more guys in the secondary that could have probably been exposed if the Dolphins just took advantage of it more. But so I was I was I'm I'm nitpicking a little bit, but I arrived on Quentin Lake. And I, I'll just make it simple is I just don't think he's very good in coverage. And that, that, that's really all I got. Like, I just don't think Quentin Lake is, is very good in coverage and he plays safety. So, you know, obviously that that's an issue. So I, I uh, yeah, that's, that's all I got. Quentin Lake. All right. My stock down on defense is going to be Michael Hoyt. Um, and I'll tell you why, because um... it's not his fault, bro. <laughs> no, 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 no. This actually goes beyond that. He doesn't do yeah, anything yeah, yeah. well. He does nothing well. Yeah. We watched we watched the tape again this morning. We watched the game again. We saw him get washed out by tight ends. We saw him get washed out by receivers. We saw him get washed out, not a little bit. We saw him get blocked into oblivion by Tyreek Hill. That is not an exaggeration. Joe can, can back me up on that. We saw him get... Uh, Ethan, I wish you had the snapshot so you can show it. Oh, you know Dude. what? I might. It is. Um, it is. Oh, my goodness. I think I can That's pull hilarious. this up. Let me, let me get this because it is worth pulling yeah, yeah. up. That's trying really to pull up Will. Listen, he has his hands up trying to get a call. He's getting washed out of play by by a five eight, a hundred seventy pound receiver. All right. I, I got it. like six five, two fifty. Here's Hoyt right here. This is look Hoyt. at him. This is Hoyt being blocked by uh by Tyree Kill, and I'm not exaggerating. This is the runner, right? I'm not exaggerating. When the by the time the runner gets to where the forty yard line marker is, Hoyt is over here. Made no forward progress to the outside. Not guarding the edge. No. Bro, he Tyreek just gets Hill pushed. Him out the whole play. It's one of the most pathetic attempts by a D lineman I've ever seen in my life, and I'm not even exaggerating. Do you remember if this was a decent gain? Oh yeah, I think this was a first down. Yeah, or it was like yeah. six, seven yards, something like that. It was close. It, it was, and he's supposed to be getting the edge. Remember, guys, he's supposed to be getting the edge, and the guy who stopped him from setting the edge is Tyreek Hill. So do you know what Jared Verse would do, not to compare them because Michael Hoy is nowhere near it, but do you know what Jared Verse would do? I do. To Tyreek Hill, he was blocking. He him. would pick him up and throw oh, him into the God. running back. Yeah, dude, it would be it would, he do would nothing be, he could do. He would be bowling yeah. with Tyreek Hill. Is what he'd be doing. Um, yeah, bro. So okay, so Michael Hoyt, first of all, him being in coverage is just a mistake. It's a terrible decision. Blah 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 blah. blah. He's bad in coverage, but against the run, pass rush situations, bro. He just. He, he this is this is this is why this is one of the reasons he's going to stock down, right? Like, check out the snap count. He played 35 snaps, 66% of the snaps. 
and he was effective in exactly zero of those snaps. So when I'm talking about stock down, I'm talking about the fact that he's playing way too much ball. But I thought yeah. he was at least a guy who could come in and be a backup and be okay against the run some. and pat No, bro, he doesn't right. deserve to have a rotational position on this team. I am out on him, period. We all thought when he came in the season, like, oh, he showed some stuff. If he can just not be in coverage, he'll be okay. No, he's not that yeah, guy either. I he's never nothing. He sucks, man. No. Nothing. I'm done with and you. You know the only. And you know the only reason why he's getting a lot of snap is unfortunately the guys on the D line they love him. Jerry Verse, Byron Young, Brady Fish. They talk about how amazing of a guy he is, and they love him as a as a leader and as a person. So he's probably still going to be out there, but he's he's off. Guess what? Uh, you know what? Let him be the assistant um, water boy, and he can he can give water to the D lineman and be best friends with them, and they can play Xbox. Together. You know what's funny? You so know what's what funny about Jared this? Verse learning from Michael Hoyt though? Nothing. Like I feel like uh, he's they're just, were, they're, um, just, they're just uh, being like nice because were... he's the veteran in the room. No, no. You know what? I was I was I'll tell you exactly. I was watching the. Oh, go ahead, go ahead. I'll tell you exactly what he's learning. He's learning stuff about insurance because that's the next job Michael Hoyt's going to have is an insurance man. He's trying to figure out how to bundle his home and auto. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, probably. Yeah, I was yeah. watching the uh the uh the unveiled, whatever they call it, the uh the thing that the Rams do with JB Long and he interviews the yeah, player. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And Rams uh, Jared Vers- yeah, Jared Vers- was talking about how great Michael Hoyt is how great he yeah. is and that um Michael Hoyt throws a lot of parties and the Halloween party he threw, he said they had a really good time there. And he said Michael Hoyt just teaches him teaches him how to be a NFL player. Yeah, just sure, how to sure. I mean, day, yeah, how to, you know, that makes sense. Stuff, but... stuff like that. Yeah, yeah, no thanks. I'll pass. I'll, off the team. <laughs> See you later. My honorable Jared, Jared Burst should teach Michael Hoyt how to be an NFL player. Like, right? This dude knows ten times more about that. No, but I get what you're yeah. saying. It's just like the yeah, I, I get it. Michael Hoyt's tre- teaching him that professionalism, which he's learned from taking insurance school lessons. Um, Akilah Weatherspoon is my honorable mention. He's we 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 benched and then cut Trey White so this guy could come in and be a starter and he's down to 25% of the snaps and he looks like trash in all of them. Um yeah. The anyone who thought he was going to come in and be a CB1 for us and do something, bro, were you mistaken? Were you ever mistaken? I knew that was coming. You guys knew it was coming, but it's manifesting a lot quicker than we imagined it would. He's already fallen into the doghouse. I I just can't be convinced that Trey White, even in that role, like being kind of like your, you know, you come in every once in a while, whatever, cornerback three, cornerback four, whatever you want to call it, wouldn't have given us, you know, some decent snaps. I mean, like, it's one thing that, okay, maybe he's not a a CB1 anymore, but did he really, like, I don't know, man. Mark my words. It's kind of head scratching. I thought he was playing okay. Mark my words. He is going to play well for the Ravens. I'm going to come back here. I totally agree. I'm going to tell you, I told you so. Yeah, it's like Mark, you know, uh, Marcus Peters. Man, well, like, what you, what you mean by play well? Like, he's going to be a quality starting cornerback. I think he'll contribute and, and make some. I'll tell you what, some. he's going to play better for Baltimore than every cornerback on our team, not named Darius Williams. That's what I'm saying. I, I agree with that. And we're going to look back and we're going to go, wow, no one saw this coming. That's going to piss me off so much. Hey, man, shout out to will man. He will be balling. He will be balling. He will be balling. Yeah. All right. He will be balling. I actually really enjoyed that. Uh, I got a lot of that out of my system because I was really pissed off by mm-hmm. this game.